So our panel today is very youthful, just in line with that conversation. And I'm having to my immediate um, left, Amos Mutua, who's the head of Governor's uh, Protocol, um, Makoni County. Welcome to the show. As well as Sharon Gogi, who is the author and content creator. And then we have Winnie Nyandige, who is a female youth leader. Welcome to the show, ladies and gents. Today I have more ladies, so I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the other way around. But of course, before we get into that discussion, we have have to take a look at the papers and see what's making headlines and that story relating to Paul Manyasa is 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 still ongoing because of you know obviously the gravity of the details but the family has come out to say that this is not our son I mean what do you feel about that development because as you watch the Sky News which I'm sure all of us uh, have watched expose it did follow up to the the village and they found the family they talked to them and they seem to be in agreement or maybe they're just being polite but then what do you make of this new development that Paul Manyasi might not be the son to these two individuals that were contacted by the Sky News team um, if I would give a shot is that in the very first place I don't think there was need of such urgency to 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 respond to the matter yeah on um, who exactly this person is, mm. probably there should have been more time being taken for so that they do their due diligence. Mm. So then they're coming out, they're sure what they're saying, uh, instead of giving um, this broken news. These sons are saying this, then the parents are saying this is not our son. Then um, Kenyans are left not to know mm -hmm. who to believe. Because truly the parents wouldn't say this is not our son when it's their son, for mm. sure. Mm. And then um, it is the airline that needed to take time mm. before coming out to Kenyans to, to talk about this matter. Mm. I don't think that was, because this is not, um, this, this didn't happen yesterday. Yes. Yeah, death happened uh, quite some time. It's and, been uh, a few months. So if you talk about due di diligence, Sky News has been working on this story for a few months, yeah. and they trailed it all the way to the authorities in the in the in the in at the airport, the cleaning company. They did confirm that indeed one person was missing from their their staff, and then they traced the identity of that person back to the village. And what they had was a picture, and they were asking the family, "Do you think?" And the item that, they, ha that they, they had recovered from the accident. They were asking the family, do you think this is your son? And based on the items and some of the facial fe features, because this was a reconstruction of his face, they did uh, say that this actually indeed looks like our son. So it is possible that they, they did their due diligence. It's just that the family now is not saying is not in agreement as they were earlier on. But their friends say that the bag written on MCA is a bag that this guy had. Right? Yeah. So what do you make of this, Sharon? Uh, I honestly feel like it's a matter of, you know, when you lose a loved one, yeah. there's a lot of things that go on in your life. Mm. There's denial, denial, of course. And the parents could probably be thinking that it, this cannot be our son. Yeah. They cannot imagine that their son would go to such an extent, extent. to do that. Yeah. Probably they didn't know that he was going through a very rough time in his life. Yeah? Mm. And they, they expect better from their son. So I think it's a matter of... They're just in that phase whereby they're trying to make out what mm. could be going on. Yeah. What what really is this? What was Paul trying to look out for? What he couldn't have talked to us. You know, they're they're just trying to figure out exactly what went on in his mind by the time he was doing that. Mm -hmm. So probably it's just a phase where they're de they're in denial. They're just they can't imagine that that could be their son because that's a very sad story mm -hmm. yeah and then the the, the facial reconstruction mm -hmm. it brings a bit of a distance also yeah. it's uh, it's overseas mm -hmm. so you haven't there's a thing with the african culture until you see the body you view it then that brings a bit of closure so i mean what what's your take on this um, for me trixie mm. i think we should get to the root cause of yeah. this this is a kenyan youth we yeah. need to know who this is. Who, yeah, whoever it is, at the end of the day, they are Kenyans, yeah. right? We, we yeah. need to know who this is. Mm. Sky News, as we have said, they mm -hmm. did due diligence, thorough investigation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And before it came to the Kenyan News, mm -hmm. these parents accepted. Mm -hmm. I want to look at it from this other side of the divide. Mm. Why is it yesterday when they were speaking to the media, mm -hmm. there is something about body language? Yeah. We need to get to the root cause of this. We need to know who this is. 
mm -hmm. what really happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if indeed this individual is Shivonje, as they're saying, is their, their, their son, then perhaps the search should be for the said Shivonje so that we can figure out, is he alive? Is he somewhere? Mm -hmm. Because uh, at the end of the day, but I think the bigger discussion should be on youth and why we are not stopping at anything mm -hmm. to go out to get greener pastures. Because what this individual did was quite quite risky mm -hmm. and not many people survive this mm -hmm. but then that will be the the, the the meat of our next discussion so mm -hmm. let's just take a look at other stories then we'll get into why young people would take such very terrible risks to get to greener pastures now there's another story that has been making headlines for weeks i think almost months and that's the kibra by election since the death of um former legislator ken okoth we've been talking about kibra we saw what happens there was violence there was a back and forth eventually imran okoth won and you're not uh, we would imagine that would be the end of the conversation but we're still talking about it and on today's papers on the standard in particular we are told handshake mps ask ruto to quit. And um, MP Ben Momani has been quoted right here having said, we need changes in constitution so that the president can sack a deputy who decides to be rogue midterm. You cannot claim to be a deputy when you continuously um, undermine your president. So the premise of this is that the deputy president is focusing on local politics uh, instead of joining hands with the president and, um, you know, help has been talking about the violence that happened in Kibra. We have had the stories that have been aired earlier on in the bulletin. What's your take on this, Mr. Mutua? Um, when someone loses, mm. you, you, you can have options of, mm. um, you can decide to lose and uh, know how you're going to deal with it. Yeah. By whether you, you know you have lost and you move forward. Mm. Or, um, just because you do not want to be looked at as someone that just lost um, cowardly. Mm. You can always have something to say yeah. and, um, and um, you know, shout around, mm -hmm. you know, try to look for what could have been the reason why I lost. Right. It's obviously that um, no one loses. It, there's no losing that feels good. Mm -hmm. So the DP is not expected to have lost. Yeah. And with all the effort that he put in Kibera to, to have Mariga become MP, yes. and eventually not winning, then no one should expect that he, he was going to have it mm. just like that and, and sing hallelujah. <laughs> so, but oh, do, do you believe that he should steer clear of politics and just focus on development as the DP? Or does he, because you know he has his own political motivations and yeah. political um, ambitions. So is he, is, it, is he at fault for delving deep into local politics while a DP? Um, I think anyone trying to pretend mm. that um, we are not in a political uh, mood, the discourse <laughs> everywhere is yeah. that we are in a political mood and yes. everyone is trying to champion their agenda yeah and um even this member of parliament trying to say and um trying to say that truth shouldn't you know get into politics should yeah, quit should focus and because, what the constitution yeah. to be changed to look like so that uh, mm -hmm. the president should be able to sack a dp yes. if they are wrong and such a thing mm -hmm. um is there a style of trying to attack Ruto for yes. the agenda that he has mm -hmm. the interest that he has rather mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um so um, um, we are in a status as a country where uh, the temperatures, political temperatures are you know, getting high as yeah. we step towards uh, 2022. Yes. And we are, there are so many things that are yet to come. You know, there is a BBI report yet to be released. Mm -hmm. We had the Punguza Muzigo you know, being shot down by the county assemblies and everything. And um, so these people wouldn't just let Ruto. And I think they, they really took, you know, People don't shout at um, someone that doesn't make sense or is yeah. it's not a force. Yes, you that know. is quite true. Yeah. yeah. Now, let, let, on, on page six of the Daily Nation, like I told you, this is a story that's being covered adversely. We're told Kibra debacle leaves sour taste in Ruto's mouth ahead of the 2022 general elections. And we know that he has been quite vocal on Twitter about uh, violence and what he has called or termed as political conmanship. And he's attributing that to some of the things that happened, happened in Kibra. But the DP is, in this article by the standard, 
we on in the Daily Nation, I told him that DP goes back to the drawing board. But then under that, there's still another topic right there that we that says, um, rather article that says, no, uh, now Uhuru Raila allies demand DP's resignation. Still the same issue because what they're saying that he is sabotaging the 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 legacy of Uhuru Kenyatta by not supporting him and focusing on you know local politics, uh, e e e.g. Kibra, you know. What's your take on this? First of all, I feel like uh, politics is about remaining relevant. Yes. And as he was saying, mm -hmm. as a political leader in such a capacity, mm -hmm. there's no way he was just going to raise up the flag and declare, you know what, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we've lost and we've lost well. I think it would so, be foolish for him, politically, if we are being honest, yes. for him to just keep quiet up to 2022. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Yes. So but then, he, yeah, mm -hmm. he's actually just trying to prepare the way for 2022. Yeah. And I think he's started to see that things might not turn out as he expected mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's doing all he can to make sure that he still gets that, that seat at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yeah. So I think for him, it's a matter of remaining relevant. Yeah. It's not, it's not really, it might be sabotage, mm -hmm. in, but in his mind, I think he's all about, you know what, Focusing, I can't just sit and yeah. be silent mm -hmm. about this situation. Yeah. And and some of the uh, analysts that we've had on the shows have said, even though he did not win, he did make inroads into what is being considered Baba's bedroom, mm -hmm. you know? So there is has been an impact to those efforts and the monies that were poured into it, even though the if you're trying to prepare yourself to have seats in Nairobi, then that would be a win because 10,000 votes is not a, an easy feat, particularly in said, you know, bedroom. What's your take on this? Um, uh, I think politicians mm. need to know when to stop. When to stop? Yes. Mm -hmm. They need to know when to stop because whatever is happening, currently, as they have said, mm. Ruto, the deputy president, yeah. is trying to stay relevant. Yes. I know he can't believe it. He lost it. Mm. You can even see from his um, Twitter handle, mm. the reason tweets he's been tweeting constantly, you know, attacking the violence. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say, but it is laughable. Why? The same William Ruto talking about violence. Mm. When you make your bed, you must lie on it. Okay. That is the truth. He is the father of what violence looks like in mm. Kenyan politics. But now that's... Well, well okay, <laughs> that is your opinion. Yes, but yes, yes personal that, opinion. That, that, yes. That, that is my opinion. Right. Mm. But again, what is happening with this MPs? Yes. You know, whatever is happening, BBI is coming, mm -hmm. the handshake is here. We're just from the Kibra election. Yeah. And uh, there is conversation that probably after BBI, yeah. referenda referendum will be coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let us not forget, 2022 is around the corner. Right. So it is about relevancy. Everyone wants to be on the forefront. Mm -hmm. And uh, the handshake, they said the reason for the handshake was peace. Normally yeah. when there is peace and uh, people are not fighting, mm -hmm. there, usually, there is usually nothing to make you popular. Mm -hmm. So this appears, uh, you know, every, everyone wants to be relevant. Everybody wants their backyard to see yeah. they are doing something. Yes. They are leaning to a particular side that will propel their agenda. But I say they need to stop because right now even mm. the DP says we have to focus on the development agenda. Mm. Can we focus on the development agenda? The BBI we are talking about, I know it is a serious yeah issue, it is a matter that is upcoming, but we still don't know the contents of BBI. Why are we having people who are uh, for it and others who are against it? Does it mean that our leaders know something that we Kenyans do not know? Because what is there from the people who are compiling the BBI? Mm -hmm. The report is not yet out. Yeah. So why are we having this conversation? So for example, much, why yeah. will we be having a, a conversation of a child who is not yet born? Mm -hmm. So. They need to know when to stop. Kenyans yes. are tired. Yeah, mm. and it seems like we are always in a political mood. We are forever yeah. politicking. Mm. Yeah, so there, there is some weight, I think, to the conversation of should should our leaders be focusing on politics rather than, uh, you know, the development agenda. But at the same time, uh, any political pundit, pundit will tell you it's only natural that someone with uh, would not ignore, someone with political ambition mm. would not ignore the current um, political atmosphere. And, yeah. Just to add on... Um, the way I look at it, mm -hmm. in uh, they just uh, concluded the uh, by-election in Cuba. Yes. And the way I look at Ruto, because I, I try to look at uh, politics and politicians objectively. Yes. yes. Even um, outside the discussions on 
how, how much harm is mm -hmm. doing to our country that mm -hmm. we never rest, mm -hmm. we never give it a gap and concentrate on other things. But even when I look at Ruto, I am not convinced that Ruto had wanted to win um, Me too, actually. I by, think by, by I thought it was about, in my opinion, it was about making inroads yeah. into that, that electorate. You that's see? yes, right? Yeah. And he seems to have convinced at least 10,000 people. You know. Right? So, yeah. Now, in the history of Kibra yeah. and the ethnicity of um, uh, Kibra, mm -hmm. and um, it was very almost obviously expected mm. that it was going to be a landslide. Yes. Mm. And uh, that uh, Mariga, apart from just being um, a footballer that mm. is renowned, and mm. we have respect for that. Yes. As, does not have any history. Mm -hmm. And then considering the, the ODM candidate that had been fielded, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a brother of the late Ken Okoth, Honorable Ken Okoth, mm -hmm. we expected that there was going to be Simba the vote. Yeah. So that people will feel that we have given back to this family for, yeah. mm -hmm. and Ken Okoth was, was a member of parliament, of not being fetter. He was a good person. Mm -hmm. So it was expected that it was likely that it was going to be a landslide. Mm -hmm. So that the DP has gotten 10,000 votes mm -hmm. still in such a hotly contested place and with all those factors, mm. then uh, he, he, he is a man. Mm. <laughs> he, he is a man <laughs> in the heart. But, but, but yes. why the anger? The anger is too much. I do yeah. understand. Yes. As mm. someone who was born for office, mm. yeah. losing is not easy. Yeah. But the anger again no? exhibited exactly does not. Mm. support what you're saying if it was all about making inroads, you which know. I might mm. agree to some extent. Yeah. But my question is, why the anger? Mm -hmm. It is too much. Yes. Yeah. Okay, do you want to come you on? See, yeah. if you're acting something, yeah. you had better do it good. Mm. So there's yeah. no way yeah. you would... Oh, you're just like, ah, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> and there's something, yeah. that, there's something that you're planning for. There's something yeah. that you're looking at. When you see that phrase there, mm. you will do anything that you can do to uh -huh. get to that place. Yeah, so there's no way he, that he would have been, yes, that's what his intention was, mm -hmm. but he has to make it known that you know what, this is real. This is the actual yeah. fact. You have to on see the ground, it through. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. things are very yeah, bad. I lost one, Tripsi, yeah, yeah. but again, moving forward, mm -hmm. since the conversation for a very long time has been when you lose, mm -hmm. accept you have lost. Accept and move on. So can uh, they start with the example as we are preparing for the other coming elections? Yeah, in the 20... Because 22. he is the one who's been very vocal. If you lose, accept. Mm -hmm. So now... Now, far from politics, let's move on on the foods on our tables. Uh, we have been told that our maize has uh, problems. We have been consuming aflatoxin. And then, obviously, KEBS has come out with its statements on that. And there have been companies that have been shut down from pro providing... Um, some Certain millers, rather, have been shut down from providing uh, that said maize for... for to us to consume because they have been flagged as containing aflatoxin. You had an expose by the Daily Nation. And still on food, you're told that the meat that lands on your table could be from stolen cattle. And we know some of the regions in our country that are quite affected by certain forms of violence because of cattle rustling and stealing of cattle. And this is, has been covered in Wrestley on page 8 and 9 of the Daily Nation. It told how growing appetite for meat is fueling the bloody, bloody raids in villages and enriching traders i don't know what you take on your take is this that it seems like there's always a food uh, problem attached to our our food security in the country we have problems with that already now we're being told that the food we are having might be blood blood food and then at the same time we're told that you're consuming aflatoxin so there's always some sort of problem when it comes to food security which is part of the agenda of the presidency to get uh, done with before 2022 First of all, there is um, a very serious confusion yeah. in, uh, in this country to uh, know when something comes out mm. or when uh, there is uh, an expose. Yeah. Uh, you, you sh someone ought to be very careful to know which side of the, the, the discussion or the discourse mm. you, you need to be. Because um, you may not be sure whether this is the... the, the um, Mm -hmm. Business uh, wars. Mm -hmm. So oh. try to fight uh, a competitor. Mm -hmm. That would be one. Yeah, I, my, my apologies. Your mic has an issue. We, as we fix that, I'll get your opinion on this one. Mm -hmm. Let's just fix your, your sound issue. Wait, mm -hmm. So give me your opinion on this, the problem with our food. Um, first of all, my heart bleeds yes. when I see this thing. Mm -hmm. it, it makes me think about how inhuman we have mm -hmm. become, mm -hmm. especially if this companies knew exactly what they were bringing to the table yeah. and they still did that. Mm -hmm. The worst part is that 
when we was when we had the red alert uh, yeah. documentary aired white alert uh, no, i'm talking about red, the, the first one, the first yeah, one. Uh, red alert. yes when it happened mm -hmm. it was unfortunate that even the people who are spearheading this thing mm -hmm. end up end up uh, hurting from their family members you know i was thinking mm -hmm. if you walk into a supermarket and you buy uh, meat mm. You cannot predict who in your family will do the same. You know? So if you're doing this thing expecting that, you know what, it won't affect me yeah. immediately. As long as I make money. As long as I make the money, yeah. there's someone out there who's closely related to you who's mm. going through the same thing. Yes. So it, it's it's a matter of how greedy human beings have become. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when I see the other side of the coin, mm. it could be because of the tough economical times that people are going through. People are trying to make money from anything and anything, anything and everything they can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. So when you see this thing about the traders and the raids, you just think about how everyone is trying to make that extra shilling yes. because times are hard for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. we, that's something that we cannot uh, just bypass like that. Mm -hmm. People are suffering, people are out here, businesses are not working out as we expect. Mm. So everyone is trying to make that extra coin. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's two sides of that coin. There's sure. that's one side of people being greedy and inhuman and trying to mm. just do anything out there. And then there's mm -hmm. this other side of people suffering and trying to make that extra shilling at the yes. end of the day. And on top of greed, as we're looking at State Forms mm -hmm. team to probe the contaminated maize flour issue, mm -hmm. the one on the, the, the Daily Nation is bringing in a new angle of exorbitant bread prices. Mm -hmm. Now, if you need to, you want to afford uh, your bride price, basically, mm -hmm. we're being told that, that you need to go to such extents mm -hmm. and to, to be able to sell the cattle and then get the money to accept actually sell or actually provide this said stolen cattle as your bride price. I'd like mm -hmm. to get your opinion on this one. I think um, it's so unfortunate. Mm. At a time when um, the president is uh, talking about his legacy, yeah. food nutrition, uh, mm -hmm. food security and nutrition being one of the pillars of the big four agenda. Yeah. And uh, we are still having such cases, mm -hmm. you know, coming up. Mm -hmm. What is CABS doing? Yeah. What is the government doing? Mm -hmm. Because uh, Trixie, you do notice uh, the brands uh, that were put, um, let us agree, That's in as much as we have so many uh, maize flour yes. in the market, mm -hmm. we know there are categories. Yeah. And yeah. the ones that um, are coming out mm -hmm. are the ones that uh, are affordable yes, for the, the common Monanchi, yes. yeah. for the common youth mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. is a uh, a common laborer. Mm -hmm. common that, laborer that is what he somewhere. uses. Yeah. That's what they use, mm -hmm. you know, as food. Mm -hmm. That is their food on the table. Yeah. yeah. So what is happening from mercury sugar mm -hmm. to, to plastic rice to plastic to rice to plastic flour. eggs mm -hmm. to imported, uh, you know, inhumane food? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it is ugali. Mm -hmm. Yes. The staple. The yeah, staple, staple food. You know? mm -hmm. It is so wrong. It is wrong. The president cannot be speaking about his legacy mm -hmm. when such things are still happening. He has three years mm -hmm. just to go and his term is done. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. President, what is your legacy? Okay. We are dying because of... Uh, food mm. and mm. food is a must it's not like it's a choice yeah i have to eat mm -hmm. are you telling me today that the food i will be eating is what is going to send me to my grave yeah you know mm. this has to be addressed mm -hmm. and for me i'm very passionate because i have said yeah. this is what me as a common youth can afford mm. i cannot afford is it hostess, hostess or jogo the mm. top notch, i will yeah. go for the you know the brands yeah. that have been named because they are the cheapest for me yes mm. Mm -hmm. no. But then at the same time, we are having a cancer crisis in the country, mm -hmm. and then we are told aflatoxin is an agent that is carcinogenic. It, it might be causing some of the problems that we are having mm -hmm. health-wise. Mr. Mutua, you're in the middle of giving your point. The discussion and the mm. principal question is, mm. if this explosion didn't come that time that it came, yeah. how long would we have continued eating mm. uh, aflatoxin yeah. uh, 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 food, mm -hmm. uh, food with aflatoxin? Mm -hmm. And uh, considering that this is this is type of food, yeah. ugali is what is made in uh, like nine percent of the homesteads, yeah. especially at least once a day. Mm. So if that is anything to go by and uh, it's related to cancer, yeah. then how soon uh, is the country going to be uh, declared a cancer nation? <laughs> you know that is a question. Yeah. And uh, you realize that th this is only on meat. Mm -hmm and on, uh, on uh, Ugali, yeah. we have not even gone to discussions about vegetables. Mm -hmm. Every other time I'm crossing this. a river on Mombasa Road, and I see that contaminated water, yeah. 
uh, irrigating the, the vegetables along mm. there. You, you, you have, the, your guess is as, is as good <laughs> as mine, mine, where the destiny of those vegetables, mm. you know, go. And the and sewage is basically effluent. It's not... Yes, yeah. effluent and it's raw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's literally direct. Mm -hmm. You know, there are heavy metals in, in, in that water. Yeah. That's going to get into this. Mm -hmm. the, the effects of some of these things is not even going to be felt now mm -hmm. because it's not immediate. Yeah. But Could I see a, a point where we are going to be in a crisis as this country. Mm -hmm. I don't even know whether the government is really serious about some of these things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think the government gets somewhere and imagines we are too many. <laughs> Or probably they are looking for a way of, uh, you know, a few people can die or that. You know, mm. that's, those are kind of inventions mm. that go through my mind. Yeah, oh, I think it's a question of a lack of, uh, you know, food security. Because mm. if we are, we are, we are not, at, we don't have the luxury of options. Yeah. Everyone wants maize. And I'd, I'd wonder if this would actually stop people from purchasing, if they could find those those particular brands of maize in their, in their, in their stores. Because what else is there? You know, we are, in, especially in the city, we are not having the luxury of farms that mm -hmm. you can get maize, harvest, dry it, and go to the millers, you actually have to go to your local shop. So if that is all that your local shop has, are you telling me you'll go hungry, or will your children go hungry mm -hmm. because it's not available? It's quite the question right there, but then it remains up for discussion what the government does to, 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 to put an end to this, if they at all they do mm -hmm. anything. And, and, and on the same case, mm -hmm. before we move forward, mm -hmm. We, we are not even sure that the government is going to take an um, legal action against the millers yeah. that have produced this uh, uh, flower mm. with aflatoxin. Yes. Because I think that uh, that is terrorism of, of, of a kind. <laughs> yeah. The, because when you, are able, you can yeah. give people poison, mm -hmm. then there should be very heavy fines. Mm. The plants should be, you know, uh, locked up mm -hmm. and closed down, I mean. Mm -hmm. And um, these people should be you know, taken to, 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 to court. Yeah, because absolutely. Again, my yeah. question mm. is, where was kids when all this was going on? Yes, in fact, it is said that the, 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 the banning of certain brands yeah. was just a preemptive strike exactly. out in lieu of that expose that was coming out. Yeah. Ms. Nyanyege, you have something to say? Yeah, um, I see the Senate has directed the DCI mm -hmm. to do investigation, mm -hmm. but I want to encourage the DCI to mm -hmm. extend this investigation to some of the things that are being raised here, like yes. our vegetables, yes. mm -hmm. to ensure this is not being replicated. Mm -hmm because mm. this is serious. Yes, but because one would imagine when they started talking about the mercury and the sugar, the investigators or those in charge should have opened up a broad investigation. Everything. If this yeah. is happening yeah. with sugar, then let's take a look at rice mm. and other elements and see what's going on instead of just focusing on that until the media comes up with another issue, mm. then they focus on that. And then it's just, it's like... Uh, there's, there's, there's a game that you have to wait for something to pop up between you, before you bang it. I mean, you could actually be uh, intentional about the investigation. Mm -hmm. I mean, and also it comes with political goodwill, That's I okay. would imagine. But this is Kenya, mm -hmm. and things happen yeah. a certain way. Now, mm -hmm. let's take a look at the standard on page 10. We have... Um, Rogue officers who brutally beat up students have been named, and that is a story we had earlier on. Three of them were named. The fourth one is, is has not been identified. And Mr. Mutua, during the break, you were asking me what if that amateur cam footage had not been circulating? What if it had not gone viral? Then would we have known about this incident? Uh, I'll start with you. What's your take on this? And that one? is an interesting question. Mm. Remember, I asked you before the beginning of the show. Yeah. Suppose this amateur video was not shot. Yeah. Suppose someone was not kind enough to shoot it and to share. Yeah. Would we have known that such things happen in the mm. very first place? Mm -hmm. That's the mm. principal question. Yes. Number two, how many other incidences of such a kind happen and it never comes out yeah. because no one shot a video? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that, those are the kind of questions that we have. So we do not just want to see uh, the CS Matiangi and, uh, and the, the, the IG just check um, action against these particular officers. Mm. Because riots are not going to stop tomorrow. Mm. Students riot for uh, just for reasons, mm. and they, they want to be undressed. And that is allowed constitutionally. So we, we are getting, is, is, is Colonel Era getting back, <laughs> without uh, noticing? Mm. Mm.
but is it an error politically or is it just a problem with the police services? I mean, there is a, as a way of engaging with an individual. If you watch that particular video, mm -hmm. this man was down. There wasn't even need for the extra blows that yes, he was dealt. Yeah. But he, was, he wasn't even, he didn't have a weapon from what we could see. But they kept at it. What was the point of that? Are we having trigger happy police officers? Mm -hmm. or? What in your in in your view is the problem right here? Because I think it's a it boils down to the personal ethics mm -hmm. of the individual in that scenario. Because yeah. when you see a person is down after your first blow, what what what's with the extra ones that you're dealing mm -hmm. to their head? I actually feel like personally, I think it's a it's a problem that. Kenya is facing mm. in general. There's so much anger and bitterness that Kenyans have. Right. Think about it. When you he you have a small accident on one of our roads, yeah. do you see the kind of anger that people exhibit there? Or even in Matatus? Mm -hmm. It's it's a problem that we're having in, in the country. And if we, if we don't address this, we will end up in even worse scenarios. Mm. This case of the police officer, that's that student, as you're saying, was literally helpless. Yes. He was down. It's like he had considered, he considered it, defeat. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there was no need for him to put on that kind of violence mm -hmm. on him. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, as you're saying, it's a matter of personal ethic. Mm. For him, he thought probably I'll just get away with this, as probably he's been doing this over and over again. He didn't think that there would be, be someone who would watching. record that mm. and make that video get viral. Yeah. So it's a matter of ethics, mm -hmm. and it's also a matter of lack of conscience. Uh, the fact that you can do that to a, a human being who's, first of all, has no weapon, mm. and you do, that means that you don't even care about absolutely about their well, uh, their health, and you mm -hmm. don't even care about where this will lead you. Mm -hmm. So I think our police officers, because this is not the first case, as we've seen over mm. and over again, this has been happening. Mm. Our police officers probably don't have that conscience, that human conscience, and they. Some of them don't have the best interest, interests of the uh, common monarchy mm. at hand. Yes. So I think that that's a problem that we're yeah, having. And I'd like so to, much bitterness. Yeah, I'd like to say there are good cops yeah. out yes. there, and they would do their jobs. But obviously, this, the few, the, the bad eggs, they spoil it for everyone. And when you see this, Miss Nyandige, what's your take on it? And remember, this is just the one that we had footage of. There might be others that nobody is there to talk about or film and show us and for us to talk, get outrage on social media? Uh, maybe like for example, uh, last month in Moi University, yes. the same thing happened. Mm. 2016, it happened in the University of Nairobi. It also happened in my university where I was the student's president. Mm. In 2018, a student leader was killed. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a trend. Yes. A worrying trend. Mm -hmm. Because the same, same people who are supposed to be taking care of us, I mean, the Constitution provides for rights to peaceful demonstration. Mm -hmm. True. That the police should even be protecting the students. Mm -hmm. You see what um, Jomo Kenyatta University students are protesting about. Mm -hmm. There are serious issues. Mm -hmm. There are pertinent issues that must be addressed. I cannot today raise an issue of insecurity and you want to gag me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you beat me up to the point of almost killing me. Mm. You're supposed to be protecting me. Mm. We're supposed to be having a dialogue and ask, what do you think you as the police, the National Police Service, you can do for students in JQUAT yeah. for you to ensure that their right to education is not compromised yeah. because of security? So it is wrong. I, I want to thank uh, the National Police Service mm. for bringing these um, people to book. Mm -hmm. Let's go till the end yes. so that they can serve as a lesson mm -hmm. to the other wrong police officers. We cannot be losing lives. Yes. This has actually just pricked wounds. Like, for example, um, the student leader who died in Meru University mm -hmm. because of such protests. Yes. If we don't stop this now, mm. it will be a tendency. Yes. Police just the bad police mm. getting away with it. Yeah, and so the, it needs to be addressed. Yes, and at the end of the day, we take away from the message that the students were trying to pass, mm. which was the issues that you have mm. rightly put that they are facing. So at the end of the day, we are all now talking about police brutality. Mm. But in the first place, what was this protest about? Do you remember? Mm. In, um, yeah. in, uh, in uh, 
in, in this, the yes, in this particular protest. Why were they protesting? I mean, what my point exactly is that mm -hmm. we are making it, we, we, when we have this sort of handling of the protesters, then it takes away from yes. the message, mm -hmm. the essence yeah. of the protest. Because right now all Sky our minds yeah. yes, are mm -hmm. on these people who are yeah. clobbered, and then mm -hmm. we forget that there's an issue that young people are facing yeah. in their campuses that we are now forgetting. We have forgotten about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they were protesting in the first place, and yet there are certain Certain issues that they need to be that needs to be addressed. Perhaps our leaders should engage the young people more and figure out why they are out in the streets. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. right, right there, mm. you will realize that if you teach me that the only way we can engage is mm. through fighting. <laughs> exactly. Then, uh, what is uh, was happening in Kibera? The mm -hmm. violence that was happening in Kibera mm -hmm. and other places. Whenever we have, um, it's a culture we are developing. It's a culture yes. we are nurturing. Mm. So by the time I'm getting out of school, I know the only way I can be listened to is if, if, if I, I, I fight, I pelt tons, yes. mm -hmm. and no one is going to listen to mm -hmm. me. If I have a message to pass, mm -hmm. then I could be ready to fight. Yes, yeah. Are we <laughs> now making terrorists? Actually, yes, actually. And let's take a short break. This is turning into a very interesting conversation, <laughs> but unfortunately, time is up for press review. When you come back on the other side, we'll be talking about youth affairs and should we be taking matters into our own hands and better handling of our own welfare in the if the government is failing and other agencies are failing. Let's take a short break. When we come back, our youthful panel will be getting us into that particular discussion.